Hey guys, it's Danny. Today is the 1st of June and it is time to recap the orchids we had in bloom for the month of May. I have to warn you, there are a lot of them. So I will try to go through them faster than usual. Let me remind you that down below in the description you have a link towards a poll. So after you viewed this video, if you want to participate in a little something that we do here on my channel, you can follow that link and vote for the orchid you liked most out of all of these orchids that you'll see in bloom this month. So if you want to vote, check the description down below. And with this said, let us start with the Vanda. The Vanda Pachara Pink is one of my oldest Vandas. I have her for a lot of years. And every year she does not fail. She blooms twice, even three times. Pacharas can do that with these beautiful magenta colored flowers that sadly lack a fragrance, but make up for it in color and size. I love the tessellation this orchid has on her blooms and I really love the darker lip. Overall, she's a joy to grow. I believe she's very suited for beginners. She is a big Vanda, but compared to other Vandas, you can easily find her in shops. So if you fancy her, I would say give it a go. She's a wonderful orchid to have. Next up, we had a premiere. We had a first time bloomer, the Phalaenopsis Sogo Grape, which is a novelty hybrid. And PS in the description, you will find additional videos with these orchids if you want to learn more about them. You have the links to the initial presentation videos down below. Today, we're just gonna take a quick look. The Phalaenopsis Sogo Grape is a pure red orchid. It is actually a cherry red. It has waxy flowers full of substance, Sadly, it lacks a proper fragrance. I was expecting this one to smell more like a Bellina, Violacea, or at least to remind of that fragrance, but not really. I said in my presentation video that it smells a little bit like kiwis. That's true, but throughout the day it can change into something that tries to be sweet, but it's not really sweet. It doesn't have, in my opinion, a wonderful perfumey fragrance that you should look forward to. So if you do want to add this orchid to your wish list, do not expect much of a fragrance. It's better to be pleasantly surprised rather than have expectations that shall not be met, right? In any case, I just love how this orchid looks like and it's just one of my absolute favorite Phalaenopsis. Next up, we have my Kerchara orchid. It is a Kalia intergeneric, and I think the complete name is Kerchara, Jairak, Spot, Lip, something. It has a really long name. In any case, I didn't show her in my videos, but she is in bloom this year with two flower spikes. This orchid is growing, is developing so nicely, and the flowers, I can swear they look better than last year. It has green flowers with a spotted purple lip. It lacks a proper fragrance as well, and I know it looks like a Brassavola, but it, it's not. If you look at the parentage, it has nothing to do with the Brassavolas, therefore it lacks that nighttime fragrant. So even though it looks that way, it is not fragrant during nighttime. And I think the best feature of this orchid is that it grows so fast, it can have multiple directions of growth, and that means more inflorescences. And I think that will be the main attraction of this plant. I'm looking forward to creating a specimen with this orchid, actually. And I'm on the right track. The only thing I need to work on is making sure that she doesn't grow so unruly as until now. Next up, we have an Oncidium Sherry Baby. Yes, my greenhouse smelled like chocolate for the past few weeks. Now, I didn't make a presentation video for this orchid because it was supposed to be a ruby doll variety, meaning it should have had a completely red lip, but it's not that variety. That is my opinion, and from what I know about ruby dolls, they do not look like that. However, though, I love Sherry Babies. No matter how many of them I have, they're good. So the Oncidium Sherry Baby, if you didn't know, is also called the chocolate orchid due to its fragrance. And yes, you heard me right, smells like chocolate. Now, some people will say vanilla, milk chocolate. I, for one, 
I say chocolate, milk chocolate, kinder chocolate if you will. So you can imagine I can never be upset on a sherry baby and also the flowers look a little bit different than my other sherry baby. So I'm perfectly good with that. I talked about this orchid a lot in the past, check the description below for one of the videos. Sally, it is not a completely red sherry baby but it is one nonetheless that smells heavenly, wonderful. There are no words to describe the fragrance of this orchid. Next up we have the Lycasti Aromatica. This is one of the ICU orchids for those of you who are long enough on my channel. She's completely healed, I think, and is blooming regularly. This year we have two flower spikes, which is better than last year when we had only one, if I remember correctly. So the Lycasti is again a very popular orchid in collections. It smells like cinnamon, but cinnamon oil to me, not the powder you put in cakes. It doesn't smell like a cake. It smells heavy and very, very very sweet, which can be pleasant to some people and not so pleasant to others. If you're not a fan of cinnamon fragrances, you might not like the fragrance of this orchid. But she is a joy to grow, it is a dormancy type of orchid. So far the Aromatica, for me it's easy to grow, she likes her water, but in the winter time she is a dormancy orchid, or at least she is resting, she's losing her leaves. So a care video will be for the future, the Aromatica at least, she's very easy to grow. And to me it smells wonderful. Next up we have the Encyclia cardigera, she was in bloom with two flower spikes this year, which is great because this orchid smells a little bit like chocolate as well, but more like cocoa to me. Anyway, this is a regular bloomer for me, it has settled in in her new environment and I cannot be happier because I really like this orchid. We've seen her in a previous video this month because she is a parent of the Serena O'Neill and even if I have two other Cardigeras, which I'm hoping they're different than her, she's the only one that bloomer regularly at the moment. She blooms once a year and the blooms last for about a month, a month and a bit. Not very very long lasting but pretty decent. Next up, a premiere for me, my first multifloral Paphiopetalum is blooming! Paphiopetalum philippinensi, he was a joy to behold this month. Again, not a very long lasting bloomer, maybe a month or so, but what a beautiful display he had. You can check of course the presentation video down below in the description, he looks like a Phragmopedium, he has those long twisty petals. but. He's a multifloral Paphiopetalum. These orchids are not known for their fragrances and mine is certainly not fragrant, not perfumed anyway. And right now I see new growth starting but I think it will be another year and a half or so until this orchid will bloom again, so I did enjoy it while it lasted. But that's okay, I have another multifloral in bud right now, so hopefully in two months or so we're gonna take a look at that guy as well. Next up, you'll never guess, it's the Nelly Eiler and it is the red velvet variety, but because it bloomed while the temperatures were pretty warm, we do still have some tessellation. It is not super pronounced in the sense that you can see the petals and sepals don't have a lot of tessellation, but the lip certainly has that cascade. So just like the other Nelly Eilers, with this one, when it blooms in cool weather, the flowers are more red and when it blooms in warmer temperatures, they're not so red. But it is better, a lot better actually, than the typical Nelly Eilers. So <laughs> surprise, surprise, this orchid bloomed. The good news is we do have another flower spike here which has more buds. The bad news is she has been attacked by spider mites. I did the treatment, she's okay now but they did a number right here on the leaf and the flower spike. That's what they attacked the flower spike because probably it was juicier, it was more tender and they loved it. So yeah, poor Nelly Eiler. And even though she was low, you know what the good thing is? There's only one way up. So from now on, she's gonna look better and better. Next up we had a Phalaenopsis and it is again one of my favorites, all of them they're my favorites, but anyway I just like to say it. It's the Phalaenopsis Mini Mark with his wonderful 
white and orange flowers. He produced quite a wonderful flower spike, which sadly didn't last all that long. The flowers lasted for about a month and a half. The downside with my climate is that my Phalaenopsis bloom very late because I do have an extended summer. The winter is mild and short and before you know it, we're up to high temperatures again and that makes flowers fade faster. So from this point of view, my climate is not perfect for Phalaenopsis. They don't stay in bloom all that much, but that's okay, I get bored fast. I don't need my fells to be in bloom all the time anyway. But the mini mark though, I wish I would have this guy in bloom a little bit longer. He's not fragrant, but I do love that orange and white contrast. Next up, another premiere, the Mueller on Cidium, which Diego, my viewer, identified correctly. I told you yesterday, well, I wrote it on the screen, that I'm not sure the tag is correct because I simply could not find pictures of the said hybrid on the internet. Well, my viewer identified it. This is the Trichocentrum lindeni. Now, P.S. The pronunciation appears to be trichocentrum, not trichocentrum, and this is from the American Orchid Society. And yet again, it's another proof that names are all relative. So in this case, we read it more like Latin would read it, right? Even though it is the American Orchid Society. So there you have it. Just pronounce orchid names however you feel like it and don't get hung up on name. That's the last thing we're kind of concerned with. And again, I'm pronouncing Lindeni, not Lindenii, because I'm Latin. But yet again, it doesn't matter. Names are all relative and deep down inside, no one cares. We care about the flowers, the care for these orchids. And if you are ever in a formal setting, then yes, research how you need to pronounce stuff so you, you don't get awkward. Sorry for that little side note. The Mulieron Sidium we just saw yesterday, and I think you saw already the video. I'll link you down below. It is a beautiful former Oncidium that looks a little bit like the Psychopsis and blooms a little bit like the Tolumnias, but it's neither of them. It is a Trichocentrum. And the best feature of the circuit is that lip, that leathery brown coffee bean looking like lip. Isn't he wonderful? Not fragrant, but that's okay. Another Phalaenopsis novelty hybrid we had in bloom was the Phalaenopsis Tyne Sheen Fly Eagle. It is an orchid which can always bloom different. She can have petals and sepals that are either red, either yellow. This year and right now she decided to produce two almost red flowers. One of them has a little tinge of yellow or had, they're spent now, but there are buds on the way. So I'm looking forward to this orchid as it progresses because there's always something new. This orchid is also very pleasantly fragrant. It is what I expected from the other one, from the Sogo grape. The tying sheen is indeed fragrant. It doesn't smell like the Belina or the Violacea, rather sweet though but it is in the same category it is a fragrance i expected it's lovely the plant itself is lovely i recommend it hundred percent she seems to be a vigorous grower even for beginners next up we have the epidendrum sister my love and i know i presented him a month ago, but this is the second inflorescence. All of the other blooms just fell. You can see some of them there. And these are the new blooms that formed. This is a sequential bloomer and you can see new buds forming at the top. I will not insist much about it because we just talked about him and you'll find the presentation link down below. But just letting you guys know that he is indeed blooming once again and I suspect we'll have him in bloom for a long, long, long time. Next up, we have the beautiful Serena O'Neill, and yes, I know she's a new orchid which came with a flower spike, but I will include the ones that come with a flower spike, and I managed to get them to bloom. Does that make sense? It's not my doing that it bloomed, uh, but still, it is the presentation of the orchids which were in bloom. But just so you know, I'm going to exclude the ones that I purchased directly in bloom with flowers open. Anyway, Epicyclia Serena O'Neill, we made a video this week about it, is a wonderful, very charming little orchid kid that is very sweet smelling is already growing roots like mad i repotted her two weeks ago but she absolutely does not care did not shrivel at all she's growing a new growth so i think she wins at least the prize of vigorousness if not the popularity vote okay. 
Next up, we have a Phalaenopsis, and I have to do something with these files because there are just too many and I cannot really present all of them. Some of them have no names. So I'm just gonna go about files with the ones that stick out the most, but the other ones will just have to be the Phalaenopsis Collective. Anyway, this is a first time bloomer for me. It is the Gold Staff and you'll have the full name on the screen or in the description. This orchid I purchased because of Astrid. If you remember, she did a video on this orchid saying it was fragrant. So I purchased it from eBay and she is fragrant. It's just not my favorite. It's just not my favorite. It has a fragrance that indeed reminds of citrus, like she described it. Uh, citrus as in the fruit, not the flower. But it's weird, it feels dusty, it feels not clean somehow. It's such a weird fragrance that I smell a lot on these more commercially available hybrids, let's call them like that. So yeah, it is a little bit fragrant, but it's not perfumey. It's citrusy, weirdish, dustyish in my opinion. But hey, that's, that's just how I feel them. Maybe for somebody else, they smell totally different, who knows. But the orchid herself, oh, she's just wonderful. The flowers are amazing. And she created two flower spikes and she bloomed so wonderfully. So 10 out of 10 for looks. 2 out of 10 for fragrance, but hey, I don't care at this point. Look how pretty she is. So this fowl, yeah, absolutely stands out. Next up, we have another beautiful Phalaenopsis. I consider it to be beautiful simply because of this contrast with the lip. It's the Malibu Madonna. She has a beautiful lavender magenta color on her petals and sepals, while the lip is pretty white. So it makes this unique contrast, which I absolutely adore. I think I like white lips on orchids and then a colored background. Not fragrant, but very, very charming. The display this year, <laughs> it's not pretty. This is because I had her under lights and the lights were not positioned correctly and it was too late to change it. But there we go. Light plays an important role when the flower spike is developed. It's okay, next year. Next, we have what I believe to be Phalaenopsis Tsuchiang Balm, but I'm not entirely sure anymore. I don't know, it kind of fits the description sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. To be fully honest with you, I don't think it is. I think that ID was a little bit wrong, but when I purchased it, it had a different color. Now it looks different, the colors are more intense and the petals have this yellow edging, which I don't remember. This orchid is fragrant actually, and it doesn't smell dusty. It smells nice, fruity, maybe like a watermelon, something of the sorts. It's not very powerful, but it is lovely. The flowers are tiny, but in great numbers. The fragrance is nice. The orchid herself looks really wonderful. She made a full recovery because this orchid almost died. Yeah, my boyfriend took care of it. <laughs> I'm kidding, but it's true. So she's fully recovered now, she's in bloom. But to be fully honest, I don't have a proper, proper ID for her. And I believe my previous ID was just wrong, but the flowers just looked so much more different than they look now. Now we had a few more Phalaenopsis in bloom, but you know, I told you that my fowls really suffered in those clay pots and I tried to move as fast as I can to repot them, but I didn't move fast enough. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a look that one. I broke the flower spike. <laughs> Some of them are already gone. They're losing their flowers already. I didn't catch them in time. The blooming was not spectacular. I kind of failed with the Phalaenopsis this year. So you know what? Let's just call them the Phalaenopsis Collective. We're gonna vote for them next year. Let's just say that I failed with the Phalaenopsis and not include them in any competition. They were in bloom, they just faded really fast due to, I told you, my weather. And also they didn't have impressive blooms. Oh, that one looks nice. It's the Harlequin, but she can do more than that. So yeah, uh, let's just say I didn't do a good job with the fowls this year, so let's not enter them in the competition. There is no point the Leodoro, you voted for it last month. I think that's enough for today. All right, you guys, this has been the video for today. Don't forget to vote down below for your favorite orchid. Anyway, as a side note, this week, I think I will be on time with my videos and everything, but next week, I'm not sure if I can post all that often. A little update, I think my boyfriend will go in for a surgery and I, you know, I just need to be there. And thank you guys so much for all of your comments and encouragements. So yeah, just another heads up, probably next week, if not the other week, 
my schedule will be a little off. Uh, bear with me, I'm gonna be back on orchid duty before you know it. Thank you for watching once again and if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up, if you hated it give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time, bye!